All right, welcome to another episode of Warrior vs. Zombie, and as always, I have an amazing warrior guest to share with you, Rob Denenberg, but first, let me tell you why you're here. Success is a journey, it is not a destination. As warriors, we all have a history of ups and downs, wins and losses that are all part of making us who we are up to this point, and they provide a foundation for our path forward. We all battle our inner zombie as well as those zombies in our world, and in each episode, I interview warriors who are aspiring leaders from all walks of life, entrepreneurs, artists, health practitioners, business owners, any inspired leader that has a story to tell. These warriors have a cause, they have unique value, and a vision that goes generations into the future. And today's guest is no exception. Rob Denenberg is an amazing warrior. He's built through determination. He's a husband, a father, an entrepreneur, an investor, and a servant leader. His warrior journey began in Brooklyn, New York, where he started working at the age of 12. Actually, I started at age of 10, so I got you beat there a little bit. Uh, at 18, I don't have this one down, he died in a car wreck and was brought back to life. After spending a year in the hospital, he completed his economics degree from Brooklyn College and became an instructor at the American Bartending Academy. Now you can connect those dots any way you want. Rob then became financial recruiter, a financial recruiter with a Wall Street headhunting firm, and he moved to Dallas in 1980. He opened a delicatessen, met and married his wife, but had to close the deli after two years. And after closing, he joined a small broker dealer where he became a partner. Growing this financial firm from one to over 100 employees, he ultimately sold it to a New York Stock Exchange firm, remaining himself as a senior vice president, working with banks and insurance company portfolios. As a result of his car wreck that occurred, we mentioned already, his vocal cord damage required reconstruction, leading to speaking difficulties, which is hard when you're calling people in that, right? And, and a career change. Rob began building a portfolio of rental homes and build a management company. Today, he buys, rehabs, flips, and or rents homes and has a new project, which is one that I really want to hear about and share with you today uh, as we get into the third segment here, which is Greenhouse Communities. His vision there is to feed the world one greenhouse at a time. Rob Denenberg, welcome to Warrior vs. Zombie. How are things in your, your world today, on your side of Dallas, since we're both in the Dallas area? Dave, everything's amazing. The world gets better. You just got to put one step, one foot in front of the other one and keep moving forward. Yeah, well, that's what warriors do. Right? I say warriors focus and move forward. Uh, it's the zombie brain and the zombie things that that stall us along the along the road. And and Lord knows that you've had a, a, just listening to your introduction. And it's kind of funny because I was talking to somebody in our network. By the way, Rob is a uh, a member of Richardson Plano Networkers here, our local uh, business networking group of almost nineteen hundred people. And um, we've been around for quite a few years. And um, he finally got up the, or we, we connected to the point where I said, yeah, we need to get your, your, get your warrior story out there and also share your vision of the Greenhouse communities. Um, but I was sharing um, your introduction, I won't mention with who, uh, to somebody else because were, we were talking about you. And I said, yeah, he's a great guy. He's got this thing going. Um, and I, and I had just written, um, uh, my introduction of you. And so, and they, they went, wow, I've known him for all this time. And I didn't know all those things. And I said, well, you need to have a one-to-one -one with him and sit down, which is kind of what we talk about when we talk about building relationships. So anyway, everything's going good there. I know the weather's beautiful here. At least it cooled down a little bit, although we had all that rain, but, uh, you guys are doing good on your side. Can't wait for another fun field day of wheeling and dealing <laughs> okay yeah and i love your your positive attitude and and obviously that's one of the things that come the resilience that that you exhibit is one of the things that come with um basically slaying those zombies in our path well let's do this i'll take a quick break we're going to come back and then we're going to hear your story 
after we hear a little bit for the audio audience of our theme song, It's Not the Getting There by Ricky Jean Wright. And we'll be right back with Rob Denenberg and Warrior vs. Zombie. All right, we are back. And Rob, uh, I know this quick check-in. Um, one of the benefits of being very familiar with each other, we don't, I don't have to get to know you a little bit in this check-in, but uh, hopefully the audience got a little bit of insight. So as we said before the quick break, how did you get from where you started? Tell us how you got from where you started to where you are today. You know, growing up in Brooklyn was an experience itself. But I had an event when I was 18 that changed me forever and made me the person I am. I was in a car wreck in a coma for over a month, died. They brought me back. And that whole experience of being in the hospital, uh, you know, one event can determine your whole life. And that one event has determined and changed my whole life, the health issues and overcoming all the obstacles that have, throw, that, that have been thrown at me have determined the individual I am. I went a year without speaking, had to learn how to speak over again. And I've had doubts throughout my life of losing my voice which has made things difficult in trying to be a bond broker, trying to communicate with people, especially doing it before the internet was invented. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they, I remember, I'm old enough to remember the day when all business was transacted either in person or over the phone. And there wasn't a such a thing. In fact, if you communicated and you weren't in one of those you know, places, you're sending letters and hoping somebody actually reads them and, you know, or, you know, doing that kind of thing. It's, you know, the phone and that, and I still gravitate, you know, this whole texting, emailing, you know, I do that, you know, because everybody, you know, you have to, to today, but um, I still, the, the face to face or the phone, you know, the real time uh, communication is critical. And I can see, Obviously, those listening to this podcast will know that that you have to apply a lot of extra effort in uh, verbal and communication because of the challenges uh, that you've overcome with your with the voice with the damage uh, there. But I I think it's to me that's inspiring anyway. So 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 it, and you as you said it changed it changed your life. So so tell me more. Dave, you know, in addition to that, numerous other things have happened to me, but I don't want to dwell on that because, you know, that just inspired me to do more. You know, when I lost my voice for a year, I figured out what to do. After, and, you know, after the first couple of years, my voice got better. And then I started, and after about 10 years, I started having bouts of losing my voice. After I've had a successful career as a restaurateur, as a partner in a broker dealer, principal in a broker dealer, vice president of a NYSE firm, uh, you know, you just can't roll over. You got to keep pushing forward. In 2005, I lost my voice for another six months. In 2007, I lost my voice for a year and decided at that point in time needed to change careers. And I started buying single family houses, fixing them up, flipping them, renting them. Now I have a property management business to take care of my rental homes. But my true vision is something called greenhouse communities. 
Now, greenhouse communities. Well, let me let me do this. I, I don't mean to interrupt you here, but I but but when we get ready to talk about greenhouse communities, um, we're going to take a break before we do that. All right. So, but let me let me. It's it's always amazing when I talk to warriors. I I love it because as warriors. Um, we tend to blow past uh, the challenges. I mean, you were very clear with, uh, you know, that obviously one of the most impactful things was, you know, having that wreck, you know, uh, all those things and all of the things that have flow, flowed from that. Um, but one thing you said that, that I don't want the warriors listening to this to, to, to blow past is that warriors focus forward you know, you didn't want to stay there. You even mentioned it when you said, well, there's other things that have happened uh, along the way, but I don't want to spend time. I want to talk about, you know, where I am now, where I'm going, that kind of thing. And that's a typical warrior um, thing. In fact, so much so that a lot of times when warriors are trying to explain what they're doing today and so on, they don't take the time to really share their story, share how they got from where they started to today. And that's a problem because it's, it's not magic. People tend to look at these things, especially today in the, um, our curated social media world that, you know, you didn't grow up in and I didn't grow up in either where people think, okay, their life is perfect. They don't have any challenges. They haven't overcome anything like I'm going through. So one of the reasons we do this podcast is that people know you're you yeah you're you're here today, but there were things that maybe they experienced. I don't know I don't know how many people have died and been brought back to life. Uh, I don't know how many people have lost their voice for months at a time. Uh, but there are there are those. I've had other podcast guests that have that have had challenges with uh, losing their voice. Uh, Renee Reich is one. She's a episode, um, and you know she she leverages that or uses that to inspire people uh, in all walks of life to to leverage or to to share their story. Any other? Um, I mean. Yeah, but in the challenges, let me, let me, let me ask a question. In the challenges from going from one, because you've made a lot of steps, you know, you went from, you know, you went from the accident to getting your economics degree to bartender to working for, uh, you know, starting a deli, closing a deli. Um, what all, how did those things happen? I mean, tell me a little bit of that before we get into what you're doing today. You know, Dave, stuff happens. <laughs> and what sets people apart is how they handle what's going on. You know, to roll over and just die, that, that's not an alternative. You know, it's every time there's an obstacle thrown at you, you have to overcome that obstacle. When I started selling bonds, the first area I went was Wichita Falls. With my accent and my voice, it was hard to make friends and get people to even listen to you. But through determination and cold calling and talking to as many people as you can, it's hard work, but you got to do it. You can't roll over and just let life beat you. You got to take what life gives you and throw it back and get on top. Like, so I couldn't speak. So I found another career. I went from talking 12 hours a day, which again, helped ruin my voice to uh, maybe talking a couple hours a day and managing real estate, buying houses, flipping them. It was a lot of fun. To me, work has never been a job. It's always been fun. I love when I was a broker and the wheeling and dealing and the housing and the wheeling and dealing. It's just a matter of, you know, no matter what life gives you, make it into lemonade. You got to get out there. You got to talk to people. You got to, you know, 
It can be a great place if you want it to be. It's just your approach to life. Is the glass half full or half empty? And so I sound funny, but now people will forget my face. They'll forget my name. Once they hear my voice, they always know who I am. I love it. And frankly, you said so many powerful warrior, as I call them, warrior nuggets in just what you said. First of all, you said it a couple times in your way of just rolling over and dying the reality of it is no growth occurs no matter what the challenge is in your comfort zone so you described very some very uncomfortable situations where you tried this it didn't work you started that or you did it for a while and then it wasn't working anymore and you looked forward from that point and looked for a path forward you didn't just say okay i'm done right? You, you kept, you kept moving as what that's what warriors do. Warriors focus forward, warriors move forward, and we're going to encounter those challenges. So you absolutely did that. I think I love this. You know, we have a lot of warriors in the audience that listen to this. You talked about cold calls, which uh, uh, is another warrior nugget. You actually, with a struggle with your voice with an accent that didn't work in Wichita Falls and all those things you continued to power through that but it was very uncomfortable and probably had some degree of failures in the beginning that you had to overcome and figure out how to do that that's what growth occurs I that's one of the things in today's environment that you know as you know and I know with the current folks that are maybe just getting into life, um, challenge doesn't mean that you're a disadvantaged person. You know, you're a, a boy, a girl, a, a you know, whatever. You're, you know, this race or that race, or you've got this challenge, or you had COVID, or you didn't have, you know, all those things. We use those. As, those are just excuses. Those are just things that are challenges. But no success occurs, as you pointed out in what your story without overcoming those challenges. If you don't, and, and we all have ours. I might not have yours. I might, I'm not a privileged person. I started lower middle class. I worked my side to mow lawns to buy clothes. I mean, I, I get it. I get it. Where people look and say, this is where you're at. Oh, you're, you, you must have had some kind of advantage over me. No, I didn't. And I know you didn't either. So anyway, well, let's do this. Um, I know you're just chomping at the bit to talk about greenhouse communities and um, you know what you're what you're doing with today. And I really want the audience to hear that. I want to hear why you're doing that and and the value that you see yourself providing and kind of what impact you're looking for. So let's take another quick break. We'll hear a little more for the audio audience of Ricky Jean Wright uh, and our theme song. It's not to get in there. And we'll be right back with Rob Denenberg and Warrior versus Zombie. All right, Rob, I know there's so many things that uh, you could have shared. I know when you have as much story as you and I have, uh, we could we could spend a lot of time talking about all of the 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 zombies we've overcome and all of the the fun we had. And but we're warriors, right? So all we want to do is focus forward. So now we're at that part of this uh, show or podcast where you can share with us why you're doing what you're doing today about this greenhouse communities and and what kind of value that you bring to the table and what kind of impact are you hoping to have? Dave, with everything that's happened throughout my life, I've met wonderful people. And, you know, I've taken a lot to get where I am today. And I want to give back. I have an idea called Greenhouse Communities. Greenhouse Communities is a new socially interactive uh, entertainment district focusing on greenhouses and social gardening. Social gardening is a new phenomenon where like-minded people get together to garden, where they have uh, their own personal greenhouses 
where they can grow their own food, flowers, and vegetables. You know, when I had my car accident, part of the problem was I got hepatitis and I needed pure food. Well, I went to the grocery to buy pure food and the organic was next to the regular stuff and there was all this cross contamination. And the only way I knew to get pure foods was to grow it myself. And so many people have that same problem of needing pure foods, but they're unable to get it. Mm -hmm. Many people live in apartments these days mm -hmm. and they have no place to garden. So I'm going to build a community of actual greenhouses where people can do gardening, have gardening competitions, and with the insecurity of our food supply right now, I'm going to be giving the uh, population a way to grow their own food. Having greenhouse communities, you know, every couple of miles, we can resource the way we get our food from big farms in the middle of nowhere to right here in our in our own neighborhoods. So greenhouse communities solves a couple of purposes. First, it's a new socially interactive entertainment district where like-minded people can get together, grow food, share stories, cook their vegetarian meals. Uh, we'll have strolling musicians. We'll have areas for barbecues. For people that have apartments, it's an area where you can rent a little piece of property, have your greenhouse, which I will provide, will rent greenhouses, will give you an area of happiness. I'm also planning to work with charities, you know, who would like to have sponsored greenhouses to grow their own food. I also want to work with veterans to supply labor for people that don't want to uh, work their own greenhouses. We're also going to break the greenhouses into public and private areas where in the public areas, people that grow their food can sell their wares at the gardener's market. We're going to have a private area with different neighborhoods. We'll have a kid zone, a uh, business zone, we'll have uh, a serenity neighborhood, a sharing neighborhood, uh, a senior neighborhood. We're gonna have this broken up into different neighborhoods for what interests you most. If you're a family and you have grandparents that want to teach their grandchildren how to grow, you have a place to do this. It's getting you where the people go for entertainment these days, a restaurant, a movie. Here's a way to get kids away from the computers and into uh, something healthy. I want greenhouse communities to be an area where people can be happy, get back with nature, feed the world one greenhouse at a time, give you something different to do than going to a restaurant or a movie. It's a big complex of healthy things. I love it. And actually, um, there's so many things to think about there. I love the vision. Uh, it it does. I, I realize that, you know, and changing the world of one greenhouse at a time. I mean, I, I grew up and we had about an acre where I grew up and, and um, we had a garden and we had um, that I still, when I think about them, the, the tomatoes that my dad grew and the, and some of the vegetables and stuff. Um, I still have very fond memories. Most kids today don't have, um, you know, probably the extent of looking at uh, 
fresh foods and whatever is going to central market or whole foods or something and and supposedly organic stuff is there right uh one of the experiences i just had was i just came back from italy uh, for my son's wedding and one of the things that really struck me in that experience and a lot of people don't have the, the opportunity to do something like that is the foods that i consumed over there some of those i can't really consume over here because even the the ingredients are so highly processed that I have some sensitivity to those like gluten sensitivity and going to Italy with gluten sensitivity, I had made the decision to just forego, you know, to just deal with my sensitivity and enjoy the, the, the experience. And guess what? The food was so, they, they are not as highly, uh, corporatized and productionized and the food sources there number one were very reasonable number two very fresh and I didn't have the sensitivities to the same things that I experienced there that I have here and I believe it's because of that so there's a lot of benefits I I get the vision I get the get get the um the value you're wanting to pay it forward and all that stuff uh, let me ask you this question, then we're going to get into the last segment, what I call land the plane. But it's obvious to me, and I do know this from our, our past, is you life is a team sport. You need a lot more than just a vision to make it happen. And I know you're kind of working on a, a business plan and some of that stuff to make this happen. Um, what kind of uh, folks are you hoping hear this this message and can step up to join your team or help you with this because it's a great vision i think there's a lot of need for and i love the community focus i love getting people um getting together on a, around in a in a healthy environment on uh, a much more healthy focus rather than just focused on a screen uh which we all do too much of these days um what kind of partnerships can we are you are you looking for as you're doing what you're doing today right now i'm looking for property to launch the location i have restaurants and looking for more restaurants that want to have greenhouses so they can uh, grow their own specialty foods for their restaurants or at least have people go to rest go to their greenhouse and pick out what they want to eat you know, I'm looking for people just like you with grandchildren. And Dave, what do you do with your grandkids on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon? Sit around the house and play video games. And this would be a way to entertain your family. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm looking for charities that want to be able to grow their own food to be able to distribute to hungry people. I'm looking for veterans who uh, may need help with PS PTSD mm -hmm. and growing is so uh, helpful with their issues. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking to make the world a better place through food and entertainment bringing like-minded people together to help one another get away from the computers, but get back to a healthy life, healthy lifestyle of, you know, we'll have massage therapists and gardens and uh, there will be technology there, you know, to help with the growing, but there's not the focus. The focus is human beings again love it all right well um there's so much more i could talk about i can see uh you know once i open up that uh box you're there all kinds of ideas are flowing out of it and i know that uh you're you're on the journey to make that happen so i i wanted to get that out there so for those listening to this um we'll we're going into the land the plane segment so uh when we get back, I want to hear if we take away anything from here, what do you want us to take away? And then how do we stay in touch with you, which hopefully some of those folks 
that are listening to this that might be in the areas you want to target, they will reach out. So let's uh, hear the final uh, segment of It's Not the Getting There with Ricky Jean Wright before the outro, and we'll be right back with Rob Denenberg and Warrior vs. Zombie. All right, we are back. And Rob, there's, uh, man, I, I'll tell you, there's so many uh, things that you could share. And I, you and I have had some conversations about this. And I know you've, you're a wealth of ideas. And, and uh, I think that there are some, a lot of things here that we can get moving forward. But if we take away anything from this discussion or this podcast, what would you hope we take away? We can feed ourselves. We can feed the world. We can have a good time doing it. <laughs> I love that. So we can feed the world, we can feed ourselves, and we can have a good time doing it. I like that. That's That should be, uh, maybe we can come up with some taglines here. I like that. I like the succinctness of that. And as warriors, uh, I just want to say, if you're listening to this and you're saying, well, I'm not really interested in feeding, you know, I think we should be. Rob mentioned it earlier and I think that um, there are some issues that we're seeing on the horizon with supply chain and other things. You know, we're a global community now. And I think there's some real, real power in what Rob's suggesting here to, to focus on taking back control of ourselves, not just turning it over to, you know, the government or big tech or whatever. And let's take some control of our own, uh, our own, at least feeding ourselves and our family and entertaining ourselves in a healthy and a, a, an inspiring way. So in building community, I love, love, love all that. So Rob, what's the best way for us to stay in touch? You're on the Be Connected platform. This is a show. It'll be there if you're on Be Connected. Rob Denenberg. Uh, you can find him. It's D-E-N-E-N-B-E-R-G. And, um, you know, there's only one of those that I'm aware of on that platform at this at this point. But how else would you like us to reach out to you? Well, I'm at Robbie D at BeConnected.com. Or you can email me directly at Rob Denenberg at gmail.com. Or go to my website, Greenhouse communities.com and you can email me at info at greenhouse communities.com there is a lot of information at my website on uh, the neighborhoods on these pictures of how I want to lay it out it's a plethora of information so check out my website greenhouse communities.com awesome or, and, uh, we will, wait, we will, oh, i'm sorry and i will put those in the in the show notes sorry you had something else rob or you can call me at 469-867-9723 okay so 469-867-9723 97 23 okay so there's a lot of ways to get in touch with you and hopefully we'll exercise one of them if this has given you some inspiring thoughts or rob is just a great guy if you're in the dallas area or not um and have some excitement about his vision and what we're doing uh with greenhouse communities i encourage you to take advantage of one of those and uh but anyway let's now we got to land the plane, I'm, I'm sorry to say. And uh, Rob, it's been great. I appreciate you sharing with our audience. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's been great. Well, we'll be back next week, next Thursday at 11 Central uh, with another warrior. And now listen to the final outro of It's Not the Getting There with Ricky Jean Wright. And we'll be back next week with another episode and another warrior of Warrior versus Zombie. <laughs>